Verse 54. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. Whoever eats my flesh, here he goes again, eating his flesh. But what did he say his flesh was? Bread. The bread, okay. What's going to happen to this person who drinks, eats his body and drinks his blood? Has eternal life. Has eternal life. Gosh, that kind of sounds important. Again, he said, eat my flesh. Verse 55. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. For my flesh is true food. Here he goes again. Here my flesh is true food. And my blood. Am I right? And my blood, true drink, flesh and blood. Verse 50, 56. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Again, what's he telling people to do with his flesh? Eat it. Eat it. <clears throat> Whoever eats my flesh and drinks. drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Can I get any simpler? He's telling us we must eat his flesh. But then he says, no, you don't come away. I'm not going to cut a chunk off of me. Remember what he said at the Last Supper? He holds up a piece of bread and he says, this is my body. Explaining the bread. Explaining the wine. Okay, i got to do some. This is just scripture. We go to tradition. This is one of the easiest beliefs in the Catholic Church to prove. This, this is bar none, is one of the easiest. This was believed from the very beginning of the church. They believed that the Lord's Supper really was the body and the blood, the soul and divinity of Christ. And I can read you all kinds of stuff here by all these people in the early church. So, Trust me on this, okay? It's one of the easiest ones. Over and over and over. The people that were taught by the apostles, they wrote down what they believed in that early church. The church in 100 AD and 200 AD, they're writing everywhere. The bread is the body and blood, soul and divinity of Christ. But I want to explain to you how this works. Okay? Because this is where some of our non-Catholic friends say, You've got to be kidding me. You mean to tell me that little white thing, that little piece of bread, really becomes Christ? Prove it. Well, first of all, Scripture says the bread is the body, all right? Let me explain to you how we understand it. There's a long word that we use to describe this. It's called... I spelled that right. Transubstantiation. Is that right? Close enough for government work. That's what we call it. It's called transubstantiation. Okay? Does anyone know what trans means? Change. Substance. Let me explain to you how this works. In the very beginning of the church, I mean at Mass, okay? Do you notice that the preparation of the gifts, people usually walk up. Right after the offertory, people walk up, and they usually have, you know, the money, and then they have wine, and they have these hosts, the bread, right? And they bring it up. At that point in time, it's just wine, and it's just bread, okay? It comes off, you know... It comes out of a bottle, the wine, and it come, the hose come out of a package. Okay, it's, it's really bread, and it's really wine. And then during Mass, you know, the priest prays over it. And then it changes into the body and the blood of Christ. Well, how does this happen? You ever think about this? How does it happen? Let me tell you. It comes back to transubstantiation. 
changing the substance. Now let me give you a little bit of philosophy here. Okay? Bear with me. I'm going to pick on top, okay? <laughs> In the world, there are things called accidents and substance. Okay? Accidents. This is philosophical, okay? Accident. It's the physical component of something. Everything is made out of an accident. You see this lectern right here? What is the accident? What's it made out of? Wood. The accident. The, subs the, the accident is wood. The physical part. But what is this? It's a podium. The podium is the substance. The podium, the invisible part that makes the accident what it is. You got that? Ta. What's the accident? I'm not saying he's an accident. I'm saying, what is the accident? What is the physical part of Ta? Oh, God. Skin, hair, fingernails. The physical part, right? That's the accident. What is the substance? Okay, the invisible part. His personality, his soul. What makes Todd Todd? Every one of us has the same accidents, right? But we're all, the substance is a little different on what makes us who we are, right? So he consists of accident, the physical part, and the substance, the invisible part, that makes him who he is. Right? Okay. Got that? Now the beginning of Mass, the people bring up these, these round white wafers at the beginning of the Mass. What is the accident? All right, wheat, water, you know, the, the physical part. The accident is wheat, water. What is the substance before the priest consecrates it? Bread. Bread. So far, so good? Do I need to go back over this again? Why do you use the word accident? It's just a philosophical term. Aristotle came up with this. Blame him. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. It's just... Yeah, it's kind of a weird word in, in our all our culture, but back then it's called an accident. So this piece, this white thing, in the beginning of Mass, before Mass starts, the accident, the physical part is wheat, water. You know, you can see it. It's, you know, you can touch it. And what is it? The invisible part that makes it what it is. It's bread. Okay? Then... A lot of my non-Catholic friends say, well, yeah, there it is. It's bread, and it's wheat. And they say, you know, they get a little wise with me, and they say, if it really is the body and blood of Christ, why doesn't it turn into a piece of meat during Mass? Logical question, right? They don't understand this, these basics. Can, can something, can an accident... Stay the same, but the substance change? Yes. Let me give you an example. Ta, accident. His skin, his body, his look, good looking guy. The substance, his personality, right? Accident, substance. I come over to my bag, I go in my gag, I come out, I pull a gun, I shoot him in the head. 